So where is this being streamed on the web on the RMAF website or what? On their YouTube channel. YouTube. Oh, aren't we fancy? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So are we ready? Oh, yes. Let us begin. Okay. Hi, I'm Carol Clark. I am one of the managing editors at Positive Feedback, which is an online magazine if you're not familiar with it. And um, <coughs> our panel today is talking about music. Music changes lives, why we listen. So I'm gonna introduce you to the other members of the panel, and our intent is to tell you about music that has changed our lives, and then after that, we'd like for you to share any music that you'd like to share that changed your life. And I wanna point out to you that if you would like to share, we do have microphones available so that your voice will come across on the, on the live stream. Okay, so Bill Levins, ES Audio, he also publishes Copper Magazine. This is true. Correct. Angela Cardis Meredith with Cardis Audio. And David Solomon, how do you pronounce it? Kobus? Thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, Kobus. Kobus, okay. That's, that's how I pronounce it. <laughs> it's Kobus. <laughs> okay, well, that, yeah. Um, so, the, for me, the inspiration for this panel was um, earlier this year, I think, not this previous issue, but the issue before, of positive feedback. I wrote an article about albums that had had an impact on me. They're not all records that I still listen to, but, you know, I am old enough that when I first started listening to music, it was all LPs and then cassette tapes and the radio and so forth. So, you know, I started out with the very first record I ever remember getting as a gift, and it was a Beach Boys record. I don't listen to it anymore, but it really meant something to me at the time. And then the first record I remember buying for myself was Neely on Harvest. I still enjoy it when I listen to it, but... So, because of that article, it started to make me think, I think most people have a moment in their life when it's like an epiphany, where they hear a song and think, whoa. So for me, it was, I was 20 years old, laying in bed, I couldn't sleep. I said, all right, well, let me just put on my headphones and turn on the radio. And I heard a song by The Cure called 1015 Saturday Night. Now, at that time, I was listening to a lot of mainstream music. Like, I went to see Kansas perform in Boston and Chicago. Those were all my favorite bands. I'd never heard anything like The Cure. It was totally different. And I, if you've never heard the song, you, you should look it up sometime. And so after that, that changed the way I listened to music. And I went to a record store and bought the album and just, it was amazing. And then, as time goes on, I'm exposed to different music that, you know, most people would go, oh my God, that's terrible, turn it off. But I like it, and it has meaning to me, and it, it moves me. And my husband Dave, out in the audience, who also positive feedback, he and I discovered a song last year by the band Uncle called uh, Farewell, right? And it just, it, it's a very moving experience for both of us when we hear it. And so those are the kind of songs that we prefer to listen to, even at shows like this. U-N-K-L-E. U-N-K-L-E, yeah. I think more in terms of, excuse me, process than specific songs. Um, I was pretty much warped from the outset I had, I had a fun uncle. Um, he was a urologist, which doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> but he was the guy who, my father was very staid, and uh, Uncle Art was the guy who raced sailboats, had a pontoon airplane, uh, and had a giant stereo system, which I just kind of took for granted at the time I was a small kid. It was Moran's tube electronics and Ampex reel to reel. I don't remember the turntable. But giant Altec Laguna corner horns in their living room. And I knew that uh, when my Aunt Barb was playing a, a tape of Harry Belafonte at Carnegie Hall, 
while she did her housework, and the whole house just kind of jumped. Uh, that was, I hate the phrase transformative experience, but it was a transformative experience. And it was uh, at home, you know, we had the little crappy Zenith portable thing with the lift up lid that would fall down and kill your records and just, um, that was really where I first became aware that, wow, this could really sound a lot better. And then some of my father's friends who were also surgeons, um, again, were a little more with it than he. And um, I remember one guy who built his own speakers from kits and heat kits and, and all that sort of thing. And again, um, you know, when my brother would take his records over to their houses, uh, the contrast between our little portable and uh, I remember California Dreamin' by the Mamas and Papas for some reason. Just actually being able to hear all the separate voices, all the instrumental lines. Uh, it meant a lot to me. And we were a family where um, my mother was a fair to Midland pianist. My sister uh, played piano and violin and banjo and guitar. And you know, it's, it's corny, but we would sit around the piano and bang it out and play climb every mountain and sing all the damn mountain rogers and hammerstein catalog and uh, it was just a part of life to me and uh, i never had the patience for music lessons sadly other than voice but uh, it was a part of life it transformed me um, my older brother was a record connoisseur from the early 60s on. So at eight years old, I first heard Bob Dylan in 1964. Um, just a lot of things. James Brown, The Famous Flames, live at the Apollo Theater, volumes one and two. You know, all the things that these days are kind of looked as the benchmarks for the period. Well, they were just records then. We also heard things like uh, Surf and Bird by the Trashmen, uh, Liar Liar by the Castaways, you know, garage bands. Uh, and as time went on, uh, I started selling stereo gear in high school. Uh, went through a period where I was a Frank Zappa fan, so I started trying to listen to Edgar Barreza, who was Frank's hero, uh, Eugene Honegger, and other people I can't pronounce. And uh, these were things that influenced my concept of what music was, Harry Parch. Um, if I go back now and, and try to listen to these things, it's, I don't have the patience, quite honestly. I, I don't have the patience to sit in a room listening to Harry Parch's Cloud Chamber Bowls. Um, it's still fascinating, the concepts are great, but it's not something I'm gonna sit around and listen to these days. And I've taken far too long maybe. <laughs> no, when I was thinking about what this uh, panel was about, it really was, I was thinking of individual songs where I can pinpoint a time in my life in which that song defined my life at that point. Um, so when I was, I don't know, between four and five, I had a Fisher-Price turntable and I had the Puff the Magic Dragon oh. record that I played over and over and over again. And then uh, when I was in eighth grade, my proudest moment was I bought, or got for Christmas, I think, from my father, the box set of CDs, Led Zeppelin's collection, the entire Led Zeppelin discography on CD, and I was the first of any of my friends to own a CD. Like, this was like the coolest thing ever, and I was cool in eighth grade for like seven minutes. So that really defined that, that moment in my life. Um, the Van Halen album, um, For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, um, we were at Tower, my dad and I were at Tower Records. We used to go record shopping um, on Sundays. And he said, do you know what that means? Do you know what that stands for? And I said, no. And he said, okay, then you can get it. <laughs> I said, all right, cool. <laughs> uh, I know, right? <laughs> um, my first uh, concert was Tears for Fears. Um, oh. Went with uh, my dad, my sister, Paul Hales, uh, some other people. We were in San Francisco. Um, and it was Heart and Tears for Fears. Um, and it was around that same time where there was the controversy of the Heart video where they had thinned her out. So I, that, <laughs> that sticks in my mind as well. 
Um, and then my high school senior trip, um, Tom Petty, Last Dance with Mary Jane. Um, there were, I went, I'm from a high school, of, I would have graduated with about 950 people. Um, my parents moved Cards Audio to Bandon, Oregon, and if you don't know where Bandon, Oregon is, that's, you're normal in that regard. We, I, I ended up graduating, uh, so we left Ontario uh, in 1993, July, um, and I would have graduated with about 950. I ended up graduating with 48 uh, one year later in Bandon, Oregon. So we had a class of 50. I was brand new. These people had gone to school with each other since kindergarten, preschool, <coughs> known each other since birth. I was that new girl from California, and I had a really hard time fitting in. And But by the time we went on our senior trip, we were on a bus together and singing that song absolutely as loud as we could um, as an entire group, and that solidified my crappy high school move <laughs> the very last year of high school. Um, so, you know, then when I think about these songs, again, they're not songs like Bill said that I would necessarily put as my favorite songs or songs that I would ask to listen to in a room um, here at a show. Um, but they definitely are songs that, that mean a lot to me. And uh, currently, uh, my favorite band is The Decemberists uh, from Portland. And we actually flew to Austin on the way here to see them in concert. Um, on our way here, so we, we made a pit stop in Austin to see them. Um, they have a song called Make You Better, um, which really, to me, with my husband, we've been together for 20 years, and, and we, we go to these shows together, and that song really defines my life right now. <laughs> David. Making uh, home better. <laughs> I thought about this. Uh, <laughs> That's hard to say. That's hard. Probably, probably me. As, uh, as Bill and Angela said, I've, I've been actually thinking about this since Carol, thank you for the invitation, sweetie. Uh, since Carol uh, invited me to do this, I felt quite honored. Uh, but really, I felt a huge connection because music has always been, uh, since my earliest memories, my earliest recollections, always been super important to me. And I still remember um, listening to songs on the radio that, that touched me thinking, wow, they wouldn't have written that. I would have written that like next week. I mean, it just became part of it. But the one that, that really uh, hit me to begin with was about five or six years old. It was uh, Ode to Billy Joe uh, by Bobby Gentry. And I mean, it was such a story. It wasn't just, uh, it wasn't just music. It was, it was, there was substance there. And, and if you haven't listened to that lately, uh, it, it, passes the, it passes the test of time. Um, I could listen to that song right now and go back to my childhood. In fact, I, I was just listening to the Bobby Gentry collection the other day going, oh my God, you know, what an incredible artist she was. Um, and this wasn't on a hi-fi. This was like on, I can't even remember what my grandparents had, but it was, it was quite horrible, I'm sure. Uh, but it didn't matter that the, the sound quality wasn't very good. The music touched me. Um, and I don't know if you, any of you guys can, can relate with this or not, because I know a lot of you are audiophiles and staunch audiophiles at that, but I'm still the kind of person that can walk in Kroger and the Kroger, you know, elevator speakers are playing one of my favorite songs and I get cold chills. Now I will go back home and play this on my billion dollar system that I'm you know, working on all my life and, and probably enjoy it a good bit more. But to me, um, if, I had to, if I had to have a sis systems that didn't perform very well but I got to listen to music that I really, really loved, um, one of the two, I would, I would always take the music that I really loved over the best system in the world playing Diana Krall, or, or something that was probably recorded extremely well, but I just don't necessarily appreciate the music. So to me, it's always been about the music. I've turned, I've been a musician my whole life, uh, my whole adult life. I've been um, a recording engineer and a mixing, uh, 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 I mix on consoles, and, my first job out of high school, I was the drum tech for the Commodores. I got to, to uh, set up the, the drums for those guys and play for a couple of hours. So to me, there's been a lot, I could name little, you know, Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here, 
wow, what a, what a life-changing experience that was for me. And, um, Tears for Fears, I, you know, that what wow. an incredible band. Great first concert, right? Oh, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. My first concert was Alice Cooper. <laughs> and I thought I was so cool, you know. Just, you know like, I guess that was sort of the goth of the day, but I thought I was they really cool. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's a billion dollar bass. Oh. <laughs> so I like seeing, seeing. So yeah, music to me is like crazy important. I think that regardless of the actual tune, we've all got that tune. That, that It was the first time that we felt that that cold chills, you like, know, and that emotional that emotional response. And, and now, it's, and, and I'm gonna say this, and I'll, I'll be done with this, and this really isn't meant for a commercial, although it kind of is, uh, because I believe in it. I, I actually was privileged to launch Tidal in the United States. Uh, prior to that, there was this guy named Dave Hyman that opened up a company called Mog. You guys remember Mog? It was the first kind of quality stream here. It's the first time I went, I get it, I like it, I'm, I'm in. And it was only 320 kilobits per second, but you're going, God, you know that this is going to go bigger. And when it does, oh my God, now I open up my company, Cobus. I open up that app or even Tidal or even Spotify. I open up these programs and I have to pinch myself because I'm privileged to listen to anything that I want to, any time I want to. This is a time in, in history that uh, I've waited for my whole life. Uh, and, I, and I hope you guys can appreciate the absolute magnitude of the collections that are available to you at, at just a touch of a button. We are very, very blessed right now. Um, and I guess at the very end of the day, I'll, I'll let you know that the very best music in the world is is my favorite music, and it's your favorite music. So, thanks for the uh, invitation. This is a fun subject. I hope I didn't take too long. No, no, no. And but I, it, it's interesting in listening to what all of you said. I can connect to that. My very first stereo was an all-in-one system. You know that had the little thing where you could stack up six records. And I discovered if you left the arm open, it would just keep playing the same record over and over, oh. which I know is terrible for, but back in the day, <laughs> I, I didn't know. Oh my God, I can hear the cure like six times in a row. Yes. Streaming. And in, when I was in high school, the Led Zeppelin song, Stairway to Heaven, that was the one that everyone, if we were in a car together, <laughs> that song came on, everyone stopped and listened to it, you know? And so. In the middle of the street. No, we stopped talking. <laughs> well, so, you know, he brought, uh, David brought up the Pink Floyd, and you know we've mentioned all these songs that it, that basically positively affected us, and the things that we speak positively about. Oh, I can't listen to Pink Floyd. Like I can't. Yeah. And it's when I was a freshman, oh, sorry, sophomore in college, I had the world's worst roommate. She came home at four in the morning, started blasting Pink Floyd every single day. Yes. I, again, I can't, it gives me the opposite of the good feeling. <laughs> this is the thing I feel about Diana Krall. What a great artist, but yeah. like these people are, that my colleagues have, you know, every room for like six years in a row, you're going, oh my God, I can't even think about it. Even though she's so quite talented, talented right? Supremely talented, but it gives you the wrong. <laughs> Bill me a break, are you kidding me? Get that out of here. Oh, Keith, Keith, please go. Yeah, no. Keith, yeah. Keith, no go means Carol goes. Because right. that's what exactly. I'm saying. <laughs> Keith, please go. Please go. <laughs> but, but this is an, all this great music that, you know, people get stuck on, I think, because they're more interested in the gear than they are the actual music. Yes. Yes. And they're not discovering music, and it's so yeah. important to discover music. And now we've got this huge opportunity that we can, whatever streaming service you're on, if you're even into that, but if you are, we can now stream, and we can now share these things. Some of my friends have shared some cool stuff with me that I would have never found on my own. So socially, music has become a lot of fun. Carol and I had a little thing. Yeah, uh, we did. And it was silly. Yeah. We, we both knew it was silly. Neither one of us listened to Hotel California. No, but we talked Who about it for the longest it? time, right? But we, we, we were, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was I don't such either. a cool conversation. It was yeah. uh, uh, reminiscent of our youth uh, yeah. and how much it meant well, to us youth. I think what it was is you, had a post on Facebook, I think, about songs that you 
don't want to hear it shows me. Oh, Hotel California. Oh, no, it was, you, you, you don't want to admit that you kind of like it. And so, <laughs> I mean, I remember when that Eagles record came out, I kind of liked it back then. <laughs> Do I want to hear it in every room here at this show? No, but that's what we were talking about. I mean, okay, got to admit. I, like that I think what we ended up with was uh, it really was Hotel California, but it was the like the lead thing that uh, Joe Walsh did. Uh, uh, I think it was Life in the Fast Lane. Yeah. And we were yeah, going, and, right. and Carol said, "Oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna hang up and play that now." And yeah. as soon as she did that, I I put it on, and you heard that. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, it's just what a great groove, and you're going, I forgot how cool that was. Yeah. But, yeah. So now we'd like to open it up and see if anyone has any songs that they want to, or you know, music experience they want to share with us. That something that changed your life, or you know, so just ask for the microphone and let's hear what you have to say. Said the song. No. All right, in the interim, I will announce that my first concert was John Denver. <laughs> Thank God. Appropriate. I'm boy. <laughs> Appropriate since we're in Denver. <laughs> okay, while we're, we're, while we're breaking that one, I got to tell you, I just, I just went to a concert that, that just totally blew me away. Oh. I've always been a big fan of King Crimson. Uh, they're, they're touring now again, and it's the best King Crimson that's ever been three drummers out front, and if you can stream that new album or buy the new album, it is unbelievable. Yeah. Did they get this working? This working? Yes. Right. yes. Gotcha. Um, one experience that's always transformed me that I like to share is, I was going, I played two sports in college, and I was going to UT to play UT, and I found an A-track of all American music by the Flatlanders. I wore that thing out, and that got me started in Americana and getting going that way. I just said that was the most transformative album I've ever listened to. I have others that I like. David thought I was playing a joke with him a couple years ago when I wanted to play one something from one of my reference albums, Rock and Chair by the Band. <laughs> And it just caused everybody in the room to have chills. And when I listen to stuff on that, if I'm in the right mood, I get chills still. So I guess I have a question, if anybody else doesn't. When you talk about listening to the album and wearing an album out and listening to the same one over and over again, um, are there any albums that you listen to that you can't not listen to in order? So uh, I listen when I listen to streaming or I listen to the music that's on my phone or whatever, I'm shuffle. So I listen, every song is a different artist, it's a different album. Um, however, there are songs that I will skip over because they're not yes. a part of, of that album and I can't listen to them out of order. Yeah. Um, mine is uh, The Decemberists' Hazards, Hazards of Love. So that's a, it's a, say rock opera that sounds silly but it's it's every song leads into the next and builds on the previous one so it is hard to listen to each song individually right and for me it's the cure 17 seconds because that was one of the records that i would put on and let it play over again in when i listened to it i felt like all the songs led into each other and in my head because this was in 1978 so it was before MTV, so there were no music videos. I made up my own music videos, and they made sense. They told a story. Pretender, Jackson Brown Pretender. It's, it's, yeah. so, it's so built on itself. But there's so many of those, aren't there? Yeah. It's funny, There's uh, we were talking about things that were transformative at one point in our lives, and we're sure not going to listen to them now. I mean, I, I think of uh, my brother playing the Beach Boys 409, for God's sake, <laughs> when I was very young. And uh, that was, you know, growing up in, in Minnesota with seven feet of snow on the ground, the whole California hot rod beach culture was just, well, I'd, I'd say infectious, but that sounds a little sick. But of the things that I, I loved at the time and still listen to, but have to listen to intact, um, Quadrophenia by The Who. Uh, yeah. Um, Harry Nilsson, Nilsson Sings Newman, which, if, 
If, if you're not familiar with Harry Nelson, he's been dead far too many years now, sadly, but it's, it's uh, Randy Newman in some ways kind of predated the Americana movement, but if you listen to the stuff from the 70s, you're gonna hear some of those sort of Copeland-esque themes that uh, became earmarks of the Americana culture. So if, and if you've never heard Harry Nelson, just dig out Nelson Sings Newman. The songs are two and a half, three minutes long. It's not like it's a deep dive, but it's still wonderful. I still listen to it. My children mock me uh, even more than usual for that one, but say la vie. So what about any of you? Do you have any records that you have to listen to all at once or any music experiences you want to share with us? Okay, yeah, Desert Island Discs, that would be another. We, we've been talking about a lot of old music. If you can hear me, the first, the first record that I bought that was a serious record uh, was Kristen Plotstad singing sacred songs after I, a teacher of mine in Swami had just played the, about the record performance of the D minor mass. And I realized that Little Richard wasn't going to satisfy me any longer. And I went to Atlanta and started buying records. But the most important record of my life is Paul Robeson. Can you all hear him? Yeah. Yep. Now, Paul, Paul Robeson, um, back at his brother's church, his Baptist church in Brooklyn. I don't think any of you will ever find this record again. Uh, he's singing uh, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. Uh, and and the, the whole, this is, this is not a trained choir in this church. It's all beginning to sing with him. And it's devastating. That's for my students and for me. That's, that's for the it. Um, a newer record that I found recently. Um, if anybody here has heard of Nightwish Imaginarium, yes. yeah. the the way they set up that disc, it, it sounds like a story. Yeah. That no song, you can't do any song justice in that that CD unless you listen to the whole thing through because the whole CD tells a sort a story. And it's it's amazing. So uh, Nightwish was my uh, eight year old son's first concert. So we, we took him to that show, and uh, Amaranth is one of my favorite songs of all time. There it is. Pick it up. Oh, so good. It's Nightwish. Nightwish, yeah. So Nightwish is um, hardcore uh, metal. Yeah. Operatic metal. Uh, operatic well, metal with a yeah. female lead singer, and it is spectacular. They're on the uh, second second lead singer, so the albums do sound a little different from, uh, but uh, Floor Jansen is the current lead singer, and uh, she's spectacular. She's uh, she looks like Wonder Woman. I mean, she is phenomenal in every way. There's some really good new bands out, and, and we tend to stop listening. I mean, it's proven. We tend to stop listening or discovering new music at about 30 to 35 years old. Um, but there's some awesome, awesome new music out. There's so many new ways to discover, too, other than just sharing. Um, so. Well, my favorite thing is I love, I have SoundCount, an app called SoundCount yes. on my phone. Okay. I have that too. Yeah, and we'll be somewhere and, and it's pretty, it's, it's, you know, it has to be, the volume has to be a certain level, but you can just press a button and like, what is this song and hold your phone up to the speaker and it shows, you know, obviously that album and all the words and all, you know, the words are, words are a big thing for me. So my sisters are 11 and 13 years older than me and I always wanted to sing along. I'm, I'm a horrible singer, I'm quite sure, but I always wanted to sing along and my sisters would never let me do that unless I knew all of the words. So I know pretty much every word to every song that I've ever heard. So I took over the company now, I can sing as loud as I want to. Right, I can play whatever I want. Uh, but in, the, in that range, you know, the, the, I love how when you're listening to these streaming apps, the song, the lyrics come up as well. Yeah, that happens, and then also there's there's so many, I mean, on any of the streaming services, you'll be listening to one thing, and then it'll show you 14 other If he likes this, you yeah. might like this. Right, and, I, and it's, so, it's so easy to discover music, it, it, it's so easy to lose your job. Uh, and if you're like that, <laughs> if you're a binge listener, don't get ruined. <laughs> you will stay up. Well, I have, I have heard that thing that says we stop discovering music at yeah. 30, and I, I do argue with that I now. Do. 
I, with all of the resources that we have available to us right. in the last five years, I, I think that that will shift. Oh, you have so over question here. on this. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, wait for the microphone. A question on the topic for David and Angela. Since the world is now, a whole universe of music is opened up to us, it's overwhelming. Yes. Which is why then some of the festivals are of a certain age. Go back to what's been familiar for so long. Because Comfort how, So how do you ex explore new music out there? What's the pathway? Um, Josh would actually, I think you should talk about discovering the pathway. Hold on, Josh, that's my husband right here. He's He actually, right beard dude right there. Yeah. Um, so he in that dude, 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 dude. <laughs> pick a beard. Um, but he's actually the he opens up these things to me in the in discovering like if you like this then you'll like this and, and you're probably better at that than I am. What we have found to be a great resource is the multiple streaming services. We started with Spotify, we're currently using Tidal pretty heavily and uh, very curious about Kubos and pairing that with Pandora. So if there's something we know we like, I'll pull it up and play the album intact over and over until she tells me we have to change it uh, <laughs> off of Tidal through our stereo. And when I'm maybe feeling a little bored of what we've been listening to, specifically that artist, but wanting to stay in that genre, I'll plug that artist into Pandora and let that play for a while. Right. Sometimes an hour, sometimes a couple of days. And we almost always end up discovering something. Quite often we end up going to those shows. So yeah. there are bands, including the Decemberists that she was talking about a couple of times earlier, as well as others, that I don't claim I discovered them before anybody else heard about them, but I found out about them thanks to, thanks to streaming services, and we've gone so far as to travel out of state to go see these bands play live, so it's really been an effective thing for us. And I think a lot of times at a certain age, maybe you, you stop discovering new music, you, you go back to what you, were, what you remember as a kid, but what I like about this experience is going back to the discovery of music as a kid. I'm less interested in the music I used to listen to, but very interested in the experience of, of finding new stuff. Well, that and when we find, you know, find somebody new, like say, we, we like the Decemberists and Not a Surf and the New Pornographers and Nico Case and you know all these these kind of they stay in the same genre. But if you like this, you might like that, and then you discover this new band and they have ten albums, and you're like, oh, I, I, I I'm, I'm set for a while. Like I can I can sit and listen to all of these, and it's it's not just like a new band. You like their new song and that's it, and you have to wait for their next album to come out. Right. It's like, I have a history here, yeah. I, can, I can discover that. But uh, long story short, Pandora is, is really great for, for suggesting albums uh, that you might like. And also, gosh, I mean, any, if you go to buy um, you know, Apple Music or something like that, where you, yeah. you, you know how Amazon does it, if people who bought this also bought this sort of thing. Usually, you know, going through those suggestions, and you might not always like them, um, but keep going, you know, because you will find Cool stuff. Well, back in the day when I used to listen to the radio, you know, it was mainstream pop music, whatever, but there was a, a disc jockey in Los Angeles. <clears throat> There's a radio station called KROQ. So there was a disc jockey named Jed the Fish, and every day he played his catch of the day. And I discovered so many cool bands through that. And so the app that I used was iHeartRadio. Mm -hmm. And so I would, you know, like I discovered a band called The No Twist. They're a German band. So I put that in and made my No Twist radio station and I found a whole bunch of different cool music that way. So even though I am old, <laughs> I do still I do still discover new music. And sometimes it's through going to concerts. Like earlier this year, uh, uh, one of our neighbors wanted to go see the band The Melvins. And he had given or shared with us a lot of Melvins records and Every time I'd be walking through the living room and go, what's this music? This is cool. Oh, the Melvins. So when he said, hey, you want to go see the Melvins? I said, sure. Okay, now don't laugh. One of the opening bands was called Fart Barf. It's one word. <laughs> they were amazing. I love them. So you're saying Fart Barf was amazing? That's what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. That's what I am saying it would have to be. <laughs> but I mean, it's a, it's a it, you know, I mean, they're, they're a local. LA. I mean, I don't think you're going to hear them on the radio here, for example, but I love them. So, you know, it is possible to discover new music when you're old. I, I am looking that up. I'm going to see if they're on here. Well, uh, the there's other another couple of ways, too, that it's really a lot of fun to discover music if you like music. Some people honestly really don't like music. They want it all handed to them. Uh, and I find 
Pandora is awesome for just handing music to you. Um, and I use it, uh, I like it. My wife, she digs it and she uses it pretty much all the time. And I don't care if it sounds the best it could sound because I'm in discovery mode at that right. point. But there's another couple ways that I that I that I like to discover music. And if you uh, if you follow bands for years, uh, I mentioned, and the reason that I'm mentioning this now is because we had talked about it before. But I just saw the new King Crimson um, concert, and I'm going, who is that drummer that took Bill Bruford's place? Because first off that's next to impossible but this guy not only took his place but hammered it it was a guy named gavin harris and i've never even heard of this guy so i was going well, he can't he's so good this can't be the first thing he's done so i immediately go home and this was one of my you're going to lose your job dave if you don't go to bed gavin harris and a porcupine tree who the heck are these guys this guy was steve wilson who who's behind this but i found this whole other leg of music that just every song touches me so that's another way it's like yeah seeing bands just like you said that you that you know and you've seen but they've got this new person with them and they're awesome well, what has that person done give them the respect to look them up yeah they're, they're awesome and not only that here's some guys that don't get respect ever ever but it's really quite easy to do because people tend to stay within their own genres, right? So like producers and engineers. If you look at credits on albums, oh, these are the first four, these are the first six James Brown albums. Wow, who is that? I love the sound of that third album. Who is that producer? Well, it was Dave Jones. Well, let's look and see what Dave Jones has under his belt. That's another great way to discover music that you would never think, because he's gonna go, oh, well, the, Fart blossoms or whatever. <laughs> wow, I never knew that. The, the, who fart is bark. this? Right? Fart so bark. there's so Jeez, many come ways to, yeah, to discover this really if you take your time and you would hear thoughtful about it. So there's it's easy bad. ways, Pandora, well, yeah. little harder ways with the producers or right. going out to see music. Well, there's so many ways. And to especially do it. with your. Oh, he's got his back there. With the. I keep bringing up those numbers because that's my current obsession. But, you know, they're, they have a, a woman in the band named Jenny, and Jenny plays the accordion, and Jenny has an accordion group, and they're all, you know, that's a whole thing right there. And then Kelly Hogan is a background singer for. Um, uh, the new pornographers and Nico Case. Well, she has albums, and and you know you yeah. can. It just is. If you even just start researching the people in the band, their side projects, you'll probably like those as well. Hey, thanks. Uh, well, let's not forget. I mean, if you want to know how to, I discover new music. It's on nothing but the radio. Still, I mean, but not commercial radio. Please, no way. <laughs> I live here, so here we have KGNU. It's almost always to the left side of your dial, or in the southwest corner there, the southeast corner. You've got KBOC here. Anything right. below 91.9 is non-commercial. And we've got two, three great, great uh, the one is 105.5, and they're right. kind of, uh, they get underwriting. It's like an almost an NPR spinoff. There's so much radio in Denver, by the way. Um, but KGNU in Boulder is one of the community radio stations. KROQ is one of the original community radio stations, right. and uh, WFMU in New York. So that's where I go for new music, is well, say, still M the radio. Yeah, NPR uh, introduced me to Nico Case, I believe Nico Case yeah. and the New Pornographers. And um, uh, Portland, Oregon, KBOO, yep. KBOO. Absolutely. Community radio. That's yeah. Well, uh, that's where I actually. Yeah, that's where I got my husband was radio. We were disc jockeys. Yeah, and the, the radio thing, I like, always have like a playlist online, so you, you don't have to like wait for the DJ. Right. You don't You're, have to wait for the DJ to say, "Hey, what song was that?" Because they'll play the song, and then it's instantly on the, their playlist on whatever radio station you're listening to. So Now, did you ever have a cassette tape where you were just willing the DJ to shut up because you wanted to record the song oh, and wanted man, it on the so tape? There. Stop talking. Stop talking. So yeah. That's why I can't listen to radio. <laughs> and if I were here, I would. Community radio. No radio. Yeah. radio. Yeah. <laughs> KBOC, I've actually got. Uh, KBCO. KBCO, I've actually yeah. got uh, plugged in my Sonos, and that's just like kind of a... 
a nap what a great radio station that's a very good commercial radio I'm station i'm in atlanta and the one in, we, um, we we are anti uh, that we got the worst radio stations uh -huh. in the world so um, actually the one in austin Street, texas is really good too well, Roger, uh, K B U. Things, sorry anyway austin texas has a good one too yeah radio radio one of the things i'd like to throw out there that i had a number of again transformative experiences um, was Growing up in a college town, there were a lot of opportunities where they would have colloquiums or, or small musical presentations that were free. Um, and uh, back in the, the day of the, the late 60s, early 70s, I saw people like uh, John Hartford and a lot of other great performers in fairly small auditoria. And uh, you would actually be able to go talk to them afterwards. And I remember asking, John Hartford, how many instruments he played, and he said, I sat there and counted and, and said 15. And the comment that I made to my friend when we left was, boy, was he baked. But, you know, these are, these are transformative experiences. And another fact was, being in a university town, a lot of the kids in my high school uh, were, my best friend was uh, the son of the head of the music department. So there were always free concerts there. Um, I was in My Fair Lady in high school, and I know you don't roll your eyes at that, but uh, Eliza Doolittle was my friend Sean Colvin, and uh, two of the other singers grew up to be professional opera singers. And I had kind of a warped perspective from that because I thought, oh, every high school's like this. Well, no. <laughs> Uh, my best friend in high school was uh, a polymath named David Sol Selzer, who runs a research lab at Columbia and has another life as sort of an avant-garde musician named Dave Soldier, uh, who's played with just about everybody there is in New York. So uh, I've, I've got a very warped perspective, or it's very blessed to have all these opportunities that I really took for granted. and. Uh, I've, I've tried to encourage my children to be open to these kind of things, and for the most part, it's, you know, dismissive <laughs> at best, fortunately. They're not on there, are they? What's that? Fart, fart. <laughs> <laughs> I've already Spotify. looked. But another band that I like that is on there is called The Soft Moon. Oh, and they are on there, so. Is that like a soft machine ripoff? You know what, the soft moon is one guy named Luis Vasquez, and he plays all, I, I, I just read a description of what they're like, and I don't remember, it's, um, it, but it's not the soft. The soft moon, wow, 29 albums? Oh, it must be. No, they're, yeah, they only have oh, like yeah, no, five got albums. A yeah. Multi, yeah, yeah there, there's Let's a lot of folks out there. Yeah. There we go. Okay, hey, well, anybody, can I add, back, wait, back row, weird. And I just want to ask you guys one thing uh, because there's a there's a band. It's not necessarily super super new, but they're awesome and they've got a new. They continue to get better and better. Have you guys heard of a group called Lake Street Dive? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Have you heard the, yeah, Have you heard the new album? Yes. Oh my gosh, they are getting so good. You should write this down because it's it's kind of a, a universal thing. Really, really great players, but a uh, lot of lot of fun. Just just curious. So. Lake Street Drive, they, 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 they all the broken, broken bones. Oh, uh, Carolina chocolate drops. They're all the they're broken bones. That, that guy has no right to sing like that. He looks like an accountant, right? But he sings <laughs> like he's like got so much soul. Saw him at the Boulder Theater. Oh, he's awesome. He's yeah. never seen so much smoke. Well, we're yeah. back. Right. <laughs> all right, let's hear from. Oh yeah, I was just going to chime in with some of that uh, <clears throat> sort of like you were saying about the public radio. We DJ at a at a, the UC Davis radio station and oh, oh, cool, cool. Uh, you know I, I find when you do the streaming and you're like oh you know say you type in Devo then it starts showing you stuff like Blondie and then right. you're like going down this 80s hole you're like that's not what I was trying to say <laughs> yeah. but you know when you have access to a collection like that you know I mean a lot of community members volunteer we don't, we don't go to college there um, you know you can just go through the records and be like let's see what's cool in A that, you know, they've been collecting for a number of years. And then, you know, so it's really only just a time investment to like have access to that kind of stuff. And then, and then really we come in there with a, with a, 
you know, our computers or, or whatever and, and record waves out of the, uh, you know, off of the turntables. So then we get to have our own little hi-fi mix for, for personal time. Uh, as far as discoveries, we talked about the Android Sisters we heard recently. That's a really good one. Yeah. Uh, the Android Sisters? Android Sisters. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty old. It's like 1981-ish, something oh like that. So somewhere between 78 and 82. Um, totally and it's funny. it's it's like a sort of just a weird robotic like kind of a thing. It's almost non-musical. It's like a fun thing that sort of probably anybody could enjoy because it's uh, you know nothing is uh, lost like when they're saying these little jokes and stuff. And now I'm, I'm just rambling. <laughs> um, going back to like the first experience song, uh, a song that really big changed my life was a song from a band called Milo Kylie, and it was an acoustic song by them uh, called Go Ahead. And it was just like a, a really uh, special time in my life during uh, hearing it, my older brother. Uh, I always wanted to know like what bands he was listening to, and I always wanted to be able to sing along, kind of like how you were saying earlier. And um, that was one of the songs that he wanted me to learn, so that was really cool. Uh, he, he wanted me to learn how to sing it, and uh, yeah, every time I hear that song, it's just, like still it makes you feel something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like. Yeah, I think that the volunteering, like you guys were saying, in, in music. So yeah, we live in this teeny tiny town. And, but we have music festivals. So we have uh, the Clambake Music Festival, which is uh, jazz and rockabilly. Um, and then we have um, weekly ones that are, you know, amphitheater ones. So, you know, Carts Audio, we sponsor these in order to get the exposure to middle of nowhere. But, you know, volunteering with these people, um, you get to see, you know, one of my hashtags in social media is support live music. So it's, if you are a person, I have, you know, I grew up playing instruments, but nothing particularly well, I don't sing very well, but I, I understand musicians and I understand the dedication that they have to their craft and generally the fact that they're poor. So, you know, buy them dinner, buy them lunch, buy them, put them up at a hotel because they're probably camping. I mean, just like we've done that several times, there's a band that comes through uh, and plays at our local bar and she says, oh, well, we're gonna set up a tent, this, can we camp on someone's lawn? And I'm like, camping is like staying at Holiday Inn. I'm like, no, you're, you're not camping in, on the Oregon coast. So, you know, it's the first time they stayed in a hotel in a month because they're on this tour staying in people's front yards. But, you know, supporting these people that are giving us these experiences, you know, not just taking, you know. When we go to shows, we buy all the gear. You know, we buy the t-shirts, we buy the albums, we buy the patches, we buy the magnets, whatever, because, you know, that's, the money they use to eat, you know, it, it's the kind of things that you don't think about, you know, that that really support these musicians and what they're what they're providing us um, as a service. Anything else? Uh, yeah, it was just it, it kind of reminded me, you know, here around all the super high end, like everything, and it's like you know, but the people that probably recorded a lot of music that, you know, you would hear or enjoy, you know, weren't using like a solid gold cable, you know, going into like all this like hand wired everything, you know? <laughs> Copper. <laughs> Copper's my favorite. We're, we're poor musicians, <laughs> so we definitely know about the camping See? thing. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I, you know, support, yeah. support your friends. Check out my music, Anxious Power, if you're curious. Anxious I Power, right there. One, <laughs> one instrumental on Spotify so far, but. Very cool. Really singing out this dude. But yeah, we've done the camping yes. <laughs> thing, which, which is really fun. I like it. It's definitely. I'm a yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for making music. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you. <laughs> that should be it, right? Well, we still have 10 minutes, but. <laughs> We, uh, Dave and I did go to a music festival last weekend in Long Beach, but you know, we paid to get in. But um, the fun part, as everyone said, about going to these festivals is that you get exposed to bands that maybe you've never heard before. And the headliner the night we were there was New Order. And New Order is a band that he and I, you know, 
discovered together or whatever. And so standing there watching New Order play, and it's not the same band, you know, it's Bernard Summer and Jillian, I can't remember her last name. They were in the band originally, but Peter Hook is gone. And But standing there watching that with him, when they played certain songs that, you know, were like anthems to us when we were first married, it was like, wow, brought tears to our eyes. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's important when you go to these music festivals is, you know, I, I get jaded, you know, I, if I go to a concert, I want to show up five minutes before the person I went to see shows up. But uh, but there are those opportunities in which you, you show up early and you see these bands. Um, one of them uh, would be um, Whiskey Treaty Roadshow um, is a band that we saw at our dealer in New York City. Um, Soho Sound, or I'm sorry, No Ho Sound. We saw uh, we saw them perform. So that's that's actually another whole other thing of discovering music. So No Ho Sound is our dealer in in New York, and they are actually hosting music and these these small bands in their in their showroom. So in their store, and they're bringing in these twenty to thirty five year old people that just want to see their favorite bands, and they get exposed to two other bands. Well, there were three right. that night. Uh, Whiskey Treaty Roadshow was the one, and I was absolutely in love with them. Um, Americana, um, country-ish, but uh, rock and roll too. Um, and they were playing the next night in Soho, so we went to see them in Soho. Talked to them at the show, and they're like, oh, you know, you're from Oregon, cool, we're gonna be in California, you know, in June. And I s said, oh my God, like, come to Bandit. You know, it's only a 10 hour drive from San Francisco, no problem. <laughs> uh, so we actually helped, you know, help them actually come up to extend their tour up into Oregon. And it's just that, you know, when you find people that are passionate and they're from they're from Boston, Mass, you know, they're from Massachusetts and they're guys that are like city planners. I mean these are this is not like a professional band. They're they work and then perform music because they love it. And and so that's just an, you know another way of you know expose yourself to something. I never would have thought that I'd find one of my favorite bands on a Thursday night at a high end dealer in New York. You know, it's just you never know where you're gonna find stuff. So the message is don't quit your day job. Yes. <laughs> Marlon. So, um, hi. 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 Hey. So how you do, uh, how do you discover music? Um, I actually discover music in these kinds of sessions. You know, sometimes it's, it's kind of interesting just to listen to what people are listening to. I, I looked at the title of this and I thought, well, uh, what does this say here? Um, why would I listen? And the music changes lives. So I listen because I'm trying to relive a memory or trying to build a new memory. So when you mentioned Lake Street Drive, that was kind of interesting. I was thinking about that one because when we were kids, uh, when we went to my grandmother's house, there were two TV shows we absolutely had to watch. We had to watch more as well. Yeah. We had to watch Ed Sullivan. Yeah. So, so many things were discovered by me by watching that show from a music perspective. Um, so the connection to Lake Street Drive um, Michael Jackson. Right, that's okay, me too. I want you back. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so I remember watching it at Ed Sullivan, your grandma, and the very first time I had a chance to hear Lake Street Dive, they were playing that song in a Mofi room in Chicago at Exponent. And I had, I just had to go find everything that those people were, were doing because I just loved the way they redid that song. Um, so, Take up too much time. No, you're not. They, they, they've got a video actually on the same thing. I think they did outside of one of their houses. That was the first time that I had gotten uh, uh, exposed to a I same song. YouTube, all that stuff. Yes. You that's know which one I'm talking about? Yes, yeah, you look them up on YouTube. It'll probably be the very first one that comes up there. Uh, and it's just a cover, but boy, the way they do that cover will raise your little goosebumps about as high as it's amazing. Doesn't it? It is absolutely amazing. Uh, Rachel, what's her name? I cannot remember her last oh, name. Rachel. Rachel. She is going to be a superstar. She will be here the rest of your, uh, you'll be hearing tons about her because she is a superstar. Uh, but what an unbelievable, wonderful band. Absolutely. Yeah, there's so many of them. Though. So Angela and I have an, an eight-year-old son that she mentioned, and he has an iPad. And I don't know if he's got Spotify or Tidal on it, but somehow he's able to look music up just like we do. And he has exposed me to a couple of acts that I have known about for years but never paid much attention to. 
and one of them being a band called the Dropkick Murphys. He comes to me and he says, Dad, I've done a song I think you're gonna like. And immediately I'm like, oh God. <laughs> so he had me look it up and I played it and I'm like, wow, what a great song. And I'm embarrassed to say, this, I could have been exposed to this song 20 years ago, but it took my eight year old son yeah. to suggest I listen to it. He also likes metal. We were fans of Nightwish, that which she said was his first show. And he comes to me and he says, I looked up some death metal music. I was like, wow, okay. So, so you gotta look this up. Again, I found a song you're gonna like. And he says, it's called Angel of Death. I'm like, wow, okay. Wow, great. <laughs> Slayer, this is Slayer. I never listened to Slayer in my life, and it didn't become anything I really liked, but here I, my eight-year-old son suggests, and we sat down and listened to Slayer, because he's into discovering music too, and exposing me to stuff that, again, I could have been a kid listening to that, probably good that I wasn't. If he starts but, but dressing in all black, you might want to <laughs> He's currently super colorful, so I think we're okay. <laughs> the tats. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, I thought you were raising your hand to talk. <laughs> I got to tell you, I've been doing these seminars here for quite a few years, and, and this has been a really super fun one for me because it doesn't have to do with anyone's product or why yeah. you know one Kodak is you know can beat up the other Kodak or, or anything like that it's, it's really about why I think this industry really should exist I know it does for me and it's it's absolutely all about the music you know when it can sound better fantastic we, we should all be into that but really when it kind of comes down to it it's really all about the music it's all about just listen it doesn't matter where, when, how, on, what, because uh, you can always find a great system to listen to something on later on, but don't let that be the defining factor. I find a lot of people will snub a few of things that have been said today uh, in, in this building. Yeah. Uh, if you mention Pandora, uh, four or five rooms, you will get run out. Uh, <laughs> but it's not about that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the love of music, and things that change our life. And the reason all of this super expensive gear even exists, it wouldn't even exist if it weren't this. It's just getting better and better there, but I find music is, is it's gotta be the core. It's not about anything other than that. It's about how you feel. Does that thing, does it make your goosebumps happen? Does it make your little hair stand up? Does it make you cry? Does it make you laugh? What does it make you do? If it's emotional, um, it can, it can always be better with great gear, great cables, great service, whatever it happens. Well, that's what I think the, the, one of the controver controversies, but you know, the, basically the dichotomy of whether uh, a manufacturer who's, who, who says, this song sounds best on, my, on this system, and this is the song that I'm gonna play 27 times this weekend, as opposed to, you know, I'm interested in hearing what my favorite song sounds like so I can compare what the differences are, so I know what, my favorite songs sound like on my system at home. I want to listen to those songs here and say, okay, actually this does sound better. I can, you know, there's there's a, there's better something over here, and this sounds better. Maybe even sometimes, you know, people put in earbuds or headphones and say, you know, I've listened to the song for 30 years and I've never heard that background sound, or you know, I've never I've never heard that tambourine in the background or something. So those are the kind of discoveries that people are making with their own favorite music. So. I guess I'm on the side of you should listen to what you like when you come here. <laughs> I would encourage you to, we got some opportunities here to listen to live music, just do it. Yeah. Well, we'd like to thank everyone for coming today and thanks for your participation and hope you have a great time at the show. Thank you. Thank you.